evening, church. So good to be here with y'all. Uh, shall we rise to our feet as we uh, prepare our hearts for worship? And uh, it's such a great time to be here, to be able to come and just know that we are able to worship the true and living God. And know that even if your week wasn't the best, that you at least are able to come here today and knowing that God will come in to speak to your hearts. That maybe even this situation, he can change it around because just one touch from him can change everything for our lives. But shall we lift our hands and just thank him for everything that he's done for us. Oh, Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for just your glory, for your honor, for your wisdom, Lord. Lord, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise for everything that you've done in our lives. And for more importantly, for you of coming and sending your son to die for us, Father. Father, we thank you how you have always pursued after us. You have always wanted us to draw closer to you in a deeper and a better way, Lord. To have that true, intimate relationship with you, Father. And, Lord, we ask you just to come into this place today, Lord God, and just to fill the atmosphere with your Shekinah glory, Lord, that every person that comes today will be transformed, will be changed, will be renewed, will be strengthened by you, Father, that they would be able to leave and say it was surely good to be in the house of the Lord, for you came, Father. We give the worship unto your hands. Let it be such a fresh fragrance unto you, Lord, that everything will bring glory and honor then nothing will be of man, nothing will be of flesh, but all will be from you, O oh Jesus. All will be from your throne room, O oh God. And let the word be the same way, Father, that it will pierce into our hearts like a double-edged sword, that it would draw into us, that it will fall on good ground, Lord. Because when your word is spoken, it will not go in vain, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord, knowing that you have a word for us at this time and this season, Lord. We just welcome you again in this place and just let you do what you want to do, Lord. You take control. You have all authority with it all, Father. In your precious and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, let's take this time, man. Stay calm in the presence of the Lord. And let's welcome the Holy Spirit to touch us, to talk to us, make us comfort
fall afresh on me. Sing, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Fall afresh on me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the evening church. Turn to your neighbor and say, let's worship the king. Worship the king, not a king. Okay? Let's worship the king. Hallelujah.
surrender our lives Willingly our knees will bow With all our soul, might and strength Be glad she is you now Willingly we choose to surrender our lives Willingly our knees will bow
Lord for 30 seconds with me, please. Lift your voices up. Oh, thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. You are holy. You are magnificent. You are the ever-loving God. You raise us up high, Lord. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you the honor. Raka soko lo baraba hante ki rama soro bobo ere hese ko lo. We give you the glory and the honor. Thank you, my Jesus, for your love for your family for this church. We praise you, Father. Oh yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Evening, church. So happy to have you all here. Stand with me for two minutes, please. Quick announcements. So we welcome all of you, and we especially welcome Sister Miriam from Kenya. Where are you? Can you raise your hand up? Yes, there she is. And Brother Avishka. So can we give a big round, brother? Welcome to them, please. All right. So as you know. You have announcements on this. Please make sure you pick this up, and there is a space for you to put the notes in. Yeah. So we are giving this so that you can fill up the notes, do a small study when you go back home, and not forget the sermon uh, when you go back. Yeah. So learn something, write something. Very important. All right. So uh, you know we are a church. We operate in uh, Revelation, and uh, last week Pastor had a revelation about a specific study. Uh, we are titling it Damascus. Damascus is the time that Paul had a wow moment. Something happened on the road. So we are going to be doing a study. Uh, it's going to start on the fifth um, of June at six fifteen p.m. Uh, and the second batch following that, that six June nine thirty a.m. So two batches simultaneously. The difference is you're going to have five pastors doing the five weeks. So a unique experience. You're going to learn from five men of God. So please do come. We are charging you fifty rupees. A session. Don't miss. Uh, you're gonna have a aha moment, a wow moment in your life. All right. Um, so it's time to pray. As you know, we always pray for our prayer cards. Uh, Romans 12:12 says, "Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer." So we pray faithfully for things. It also says, "Share with the Lord's people who are in need." Practice hospitality. So we're going to do two things. We're going to pray for the prayer cards, and then we are going to pray for our offerings. All right. So please raise your hands towards the prayer cards. These are your brothers and sisters. Believe the miracle has taken place. This year will not end without God granting favor for them. Oh Lord, Father, we thank you, Father, for this request, Lord. We believe everything is written in heaven and done already. We thank you for your grace, for your love, for granting, Father, your children, Father, as they have faith and they write to you, Father. They boldly state this, Father, because they believe it is going to come to pass, Father. We thank you for granting miracles. We thank you for your love, Father. We thank you, Father, for the church and Father for the belief that your children have. We believe and we commit every request, Father, financial, family, abuse, whatever it is, Father, to your hands. Believing in faith, it is going to come to pass. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, guys. You also know that we keep on telling you we are giving an offering every week, especially for the pastors of Sri Lanka. We have about 11 to 12 to 13 thousand pastors across the island who are struggling. Bethany has started a new thing. It's not for our church. It's for all the pastors around Sri Lanka who don't have an income, who are struggling. Their ministry work is on hold because they are putting more time into making finances. So Bethany is trying to help them out. Hundred rupees a week in this envelope, not a big thing. But this is not your tithe. This is not your offering. This is something extra, a commitment you are making. You are becoming part of the expansion of the kingdom of God in Sri Lanka, right? So when you give, you give. And like the word says, share with the Lord's people who are in need. And we are doing this for the Lord's shepherds who are in need right now. All right, practice hospitality. So let's pray for the offering and give generously. Father Lord, we thank you, Father, for every hand that sows today, Father, into the kingdom. Lord, bless their hands, bless their businesses, the workplaces, Lord. Give them grace in abundance, Father. Victory in abundance in all things they do. Father Lord, we say, Father, to the leaders of this church, as they take these finances, give them the wisdom, Lord, to use in a mighty way. Touch Sri Lanka, transform Sri Lanka, Father, and use these monies, Father, to really impact this nation and transform the next generation. To your hands, Lord, we give this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may come forward and drop your offering.
Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We bless you. We give you, Lord, the glory. We give you the honor for you are a good, good God. Amen. Once again, wow, blessed evening. So good to see all the Sunday school children in the balcony. That's nice to see them. Once again, welcome to all of you. Uh, why don't we give the worship team, I, I love to give them a clap offering. So give them a clap offering tonight. Thank you. I mean, they do a tremendous work. You know, it's... Uh, Commitment, commitment, commitment. Thank you. you may, uh, worship team, you may take your seat. We'll call you in a few minutes' time, okay? Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and say something. Man, you're looking better than last week. I mean, <laughs> Now tell the person who told, please tell that same person, I was not lying to you, okay? <laughs> Tell them that you were not lying, that you were really serious, you were sincere, honest. According to the scripture, uh, the glory keeps increasing, amen? That's the way the Bible tells us. The glory keeps increasing, so the beauty, the looks, the smartness ought to keep increasing. So once again, we are so excited, we are so happy that you are here. Uh, a brand new month. As a church, we believe that God has called us to do so many things. So in the month of June as well, we'll be doing a few things and we want you to get involved. Like Pastor Akila said, we're excited to launch uh, the series on Damascus. Amen. Um, lovely series. So very unique occasion. Uh, 50 rupees a week, isn't it? So that's, I mean, that's how uh, cheap your pastors are in this church. They will, they're willing to show their faces for 50 bucks a week. I mean, I'll tell you what, but that, that's okay. It's more than cheap, I want you to know. It's how much they love you. So I asked them, can you come and show your face for 50 rupees a week? Yeah, Pastor, we'll do that. Just because we love the people that we serve at better needs. So make sure that you begin to enroll and begin to come, like he said, on Wednesday and on Thursday. It is said, the greatest enemy for a man or a woman to begin to advance in the things of God are not the things that are around them, it are the things that are within them. The greatest enemy that hinders an individual from moving forward in life, very especially pertaining to the call of God, is not the things that surround you, it's the things within you. More often than not, you have less control of the things that happen outside, there, but you are in full control of what happens inside of you. And long as you begin to take responsibility, how you begin to handle the inner part of you, the chances increase for you experiencing the greater things that God has for you in the outer. So tonight, Vanessa begin to bring a small word for you. I pray that you'll begin to take note and that you will begin to look into this matter very seriously. It seems to be a very simple matter, but it can have a very big negative impact in your life and the people around you. I wish if I can give you a title for tonight's message, but I cannot give you a title, but I can give you an explanation of what I'm about to speak. So here's my explanation for tonight's message. It's dangerous, it's vicious, it's poisonous. It's dangerous, it's vicious, it's poisonous. I know already some of you are saying, I have some of them at home. No, no, we're not speaking about them. <laughs> they're dangerous, they're vicious, they're poisonous. No, 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 no. Please don't get there. It, it's far from home. Dangerous, vicious, poisonous. The question one ought to ask is, who is it or what are we speaking about that could be dangerous, vicious, and poisonous. Could it be drugs? Because drugs can do all of those. Could it be weapons? Weapons can do all of that. Could it be snakes? And I know some of you hate snakes. Some of you hate snakes. Let me see. I mean, isn't it? I also hate snakes. I mean, 
I know the Bible tells us that we have the power and the anointing to trample on snakes and things, but even a guarantee has scares me, you know. So, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> so in the event if a guarantee or something comes to your house, you're looking to call for someone, please don't call me because I'm not going to come to help you. I'm just going to say, may God bless you. God be with you. I mean, that's all. Okay, so, but so who is it or what is it that we're trying to speak tonight? Is it about drugs? Is it about weapons? Is it about a snake? Could it be even a vicious deadly spider? Could it be money? Could it be power? And I can begin to tell you a few more things about this. But so what are we speaking about? Let me describe it a little bit more. It's like the venom in a serpent and like lava in the volcano. It's silent as a cyanide, but destructive as a tsunami. The question again about who are we speaking? About what are we speaking? I made a statement where it says, and it finds its dwelling in people. And it finds its dwelling in people. So the chances are, it's in you. And the problem with this is, if I'm to tell you that you have it, the 99% chances that you are going to get offended with me. If I tell you you have it, the chances you are going to say, no, I don't have it. If I'm to ask you, have you seen it? I'm sure you will say, I have seen it. Somebody else has it. Do you have it? No, I don't have it. So, about what, about who are we speaking? Like I said, it's dangerous, it's vicious, it's deadly. It can destroy your life, it can destroy relationships. It's something that if not dealt with quickly, that can begin to destroy your entire life, your future and everything. Again, I'm repeating myself by saying, if I'm telling you that you have it, you're going to say, no, I don't have it. But you'll be quick to say, but my neighbor has it. But I, I really don't have it, Pastor D. But let's begin to walk along this subject. And I want to take, pick this from the story of Daniel and try to pick this. What are we speaking? Who are we speaking about? Daniel chapter 6 and verse 1, verse 4, verse 6, verse 11, verse 15. We want to read all these verses tonight just to lay the foundation. And that's all the scripture for tonight. Daniel 6, chapter, verse 1, verse 4, verse 6, verse 11, verse 13, verse 15. So at the count of 1, 2, 3, I want you to do me a favor. I want to read the scripture together with me. Okay, can we do that? 1, 2, 3. It pleased Darius to rule throughout the kingdom. Okay, continue verse 4. At this the administrators and the satraps verse 6 so the administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said may king Darius live forever verse 11 then these men went as a group. Verse 13. Then they said to the king, Pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. Verse 15 in the final verse. Then the men went Right, here we are speaking about a, a man called Daniel. We are speaking of a group of people. We are informed, introduced to a king 
as well in mean, chapter 1 and verse 1 it tells us something about daniel and about the government of that time in verse 2 if you begin to read it tells us that the king said daniel about all these people now daniel comes from another land and he is now in the he is in the babylonian kingdom and daniel has found favor with the king as a result of finding favor with the king daniel has been promoted daniel is in a good place at this moment in his life because daniel is in a good place you begin to recognize the people that were around daniel were not happy what was taking place in daniel's life i want to say this to you i really believe if you and i can begin to have the lifestyle of daniel you and i also will begin to see god promoting us in our lifetime so there are many people who want the great things of god but who are not willing to do the simple things that is required of us see there are some of you who you pray like daniel but the problem is you don't live like daniel of course there are some of you you do the opposite but you know if you begin to have the lifestyle of daniel i'm, I'm convinced that you will see god promoting you raising you up placing you in high positions while you are on earth daniel was a man who was not interested in his own status he was more interested in pleasing god life was never about what daniel could get for daniel life was all about how can i serve the greater purposes and the cause of god daniel was a man who began to make a resolution that he will not take shortcuts in life but he's going to stand strong and firm on the truths that he believed and as a result of it god started to bless him and to promote him but it seemed that the people around him were not happy with him maybe there are some of you like daniel here tonight it seems that you are blessed you're finding favor people like you people are kind to you people are generous to you but the people around you cannot handle it i'm trying to introduce you to what we call deadly poisonous and vicious what is it who is it we are speaking about now you may say you don't have it to make life easy for you what i'm trying to help you out is to help you to see the manifestations of the symptoms so if one has the manifestations of the symptoms that means one has the symptoms so it will be easy first to check the manifestations check out on the manifestations and see if you have some of them see the truth about life is this your lifestyle your talk your speech your actions with your knowledge or without your knowledge is a demonstration or a reflection of that which is within you you even do not know it sometimes but your talk your life your action your attitude is a reflection of what's within you so i want to start off by saying this people who have these symptoms the first problem that they have is you look to find fault now if you read verse 4 very clearly you begin to see this in the story at this the administrators and the satraps tried to do what tried to find grounds or tried to find a fault take note of the word they tried that means there was a effective intentional plan to find fault with a person that was pleasing to god that was promoted by god that was you know blessed in that demonic kingdom but for some reason because some people had this vicious poisonous deadly what we are trying to explain to you what they started to do is they tried to find 
fault. You see, friends, when one is infected with this, what we are trying to describe, what are the manifestations is, you're always looking to find fault with the one that you're not happy with. For whatever reason. This is the exact thing what the rulers at that time begin to do. They were intentionally trying to find fault. I, I think sometimes even Christians have this terrible attribute symptoms that we'll begin to explain to you in a few minutes time because they carry it all that they try to do in their life is to find fault don't lift your hand don't say anything how many of you have seen people who all that they do is trying to find fault with another and sometimes the reason is because they're having a symptoms and that symptoms within them is the very thing that is affecting them, their relationship towards you. In what relationships would these symptoms begin to manifest? In marriage, these symptoms manifest. In the business world, for sure, it will manifest. Among peers, brothers, sisters, relations, I'll tell you what, for surely it manifests. Sadly, sometimes even in the church, it begins to manifest. To make it even more sad, sometimes it manifests with the so-called people who said, I'm committed to serve God without their knowledge, even they begin to manifest this. Even to make life even more difficult sometimes, the so-called clergy also begins to manifest these symptoms. When you have these symptoms, all that you are doing is you're looking to find fault with another. Not because anything is wrong with that person, because there is something wrong with you regarding that person. So as a result of it, something is driving you, something is compelling you. Go find fault. Go dig some dirt. Check out if you can find something to put this person. It's, you know why? Because you have this vicious symptoms. Like I told you, when I come down in about 15 minutes time, don't get me wrong, I'm going to come with my finger like this. I point to some of you and I say, you have it, I think. Don't you get upset with me. If you are fair like Pastor Bobby, the chances are you might get red. If you are dark like Brother Glenn, you might become mauve. If you are like, you know, brown, you might become yellow. But that's okay. It's because you have the symptoms and you cannot acknowledge when somebody comes and tells you, you have it. But I feel it's going to happen. I feel the pastor of this church is going to step down in a few minutes' time and he's going to come close to you. Somebody can, can you say, I can feel it's going to happen. Can you say that? I'm going to say it again. I feel the pastor of this church is going to step down and he's going to come next to you. And I want you to say, I can feel it's going to happen. Okay? Okay, now we're going to try this. I feel the pastor of the church is going to step down in a few minutes and he's going to come and tell it to you. I can feel it's going to happen. Let me give you another manifestation just for you to begin to see if you begin to have it. Because right now yourself, you are recognizing I don't have it, but so-and-so has it. I mean, that's the way people are, you know. I don't have it, but that person for surely has it. Another manifestation when people have these symptoms is 
Now listen, they're unable to acknowledge the value of that individual. When you have these symptoms, it puts you in a place that you are unable to acknowledge the value of that individual. See, Daniel, my beloved friends, was a tremendous man. A man of righteousness, a man of integrity, a man of great wisdom, a man who began to interpret dreams, see dreams. He was a man of great stature. There was, you know, no fault in him. That's how the Bible begins to describe him. But it seems that the people who were around him could not give value to him. You know why? Nothing wrong with Daniel. The people around him was carrying these vicious symptoms. So as a result of it, they could not give value to that individual. See, there are some of you, you don't get your due value from people around you. Not because you're not valuable, because the people around you are carrying the symptoms. So as a result of it, they cannot give you that value. Unless they are set free tonight, they will never ever give you that value. I've seen this sadly in many people's lives. The inability to give value to individuals. They cannot see the value. Because they are carrying these deadly symptoms within them. Ask yourself the question. Do you get offended very quickly with certain people? Do you get angry very quickly with certain groups of people? Do certain types of people, do certain individuals make you feel irritated? Ask yourself the question. Why do I feel what I feel? Maybe because you're having the symptoms. Maybe. But because you lack the character to acknowledge it, you will not acknowledge it. You will just pass it by and say, I don't have it. But your symptoms tell us that you have it. You see, when a person has a small cut on their foot, on their soul, when they wear their slippers or their shoes, they don't tell anybody. But their walk tells us that there's a problem in the foot. Haven't you seen certain people, sometimes there's a small cut, but it's a pain. So you see them walking. You see them doing that. Well, you have a problem. No, 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 I don't have a problem. But your walk tells me you have a problem. But you don't want to acknowledge it. Forgive me for this expression. Sometimes there is what we call nature calls. That is what God has put in all people. Suddenly, you feel heavy or something. And you want to go somewhere. And suddenly, you meet that person. And you're trying to talk to that person. You say, hi, how are you? And that person, there's, there's a rumbling in the... And you say, hey, how are you? Why, any problem? No, no, no. You don't admit it. But you are in the middle of a problem. You don't tell us. I've sat for meetings with people. Sometimes when I'm sitting in meetings, I can tell some people. And that's the best time to blow a whistle and say, break. Because otherwise, you know, your room. Why are you laughing? I don't know why you're laughing. I just said your room, that's all. The manifestations tell us that people have the symptoms.
Let me give one more. Just to see if you can find that you have it. The third manifestation could be is, you will do what you usually don't do or what you don't like to do. When you have these symptoms within you, you will usually do what you even don't want to do. It will drive you to a place that will cause you to do things that you never ever thought you will do. It will push you to a place to say things that you never ever thought that you can talk this. It's just because you are carrying the symptoms. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. If you read verse 6 together with me, it says, So these administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, What did they say to the king? Make King Darius live forever. You see, I'm going to help you to see something here. This group was trying to find fault with Daniel. They did their homework, they did their research. They could find no fault with him. So they had no opportunity of directly pointing a finger at them. But now because the symptoms is within them, something is making them feel uncomfortable. How many of you ever had chicken pox? Let me see your hands. When you have chicken pox, what happens to you? What do you want to do always like? You want to sometimes scratch, isn't it? You know, it's automatic. It's because of the symptoms, there is a manifestation. Now these people were having these symptoms and they were trying to find fault, could not find fault, but suddenly Pastor Peter, they got a bright idea. You know what the bright idea was? If we can't find fault with the man, we can't pin him down let's take this to a person who can solve the problem see be careful those of you who very quickly get caught to certain people see when they came to the king the way they spoke to the king would have really pleased the king what were the words they used to the king Listen to the words. So the administrators and the satraps went to the uh, went as a group and said to the king Make King Darius live forever. Oh, I'll tell you what, King was happy. These fellows love me. It is like somebody coming to Pastor Peter and say, Pastor Peter, you look so holy. <laughs> He's so happy. Pastor Peter, the way you pray, the way you talk, or oh, the way you do things, so wonderful, Pastor. Pastor Peter is feeling so good. But he doesn't know that all this flattering is not because they love him, neither because they love the church. It's because they're carrying a symptoms and they're looking for somebody to be used to carry out their assignment. You understand what I'm saying? But they come to you that way. And after that, they will tell Pastor Peter, you know, Pastor, if there were people like you in this church, oh, this church will really grow. You're the best. And Pastor Peter feels so good. Wow. And they, then they begin to tell Pastor Peter, Pastor Peter, why not we come up with a few plans? Pastor Peter says, oh, my goodness me, these people are so good, so kind, so loving. Let's come up with a certain plan. You know why? He listened to the words without discerning the spirit. Now listen to me very carefully. When you listen to people, don't only listen to the words. May the Lord give you the ability to discern the spirit. Because satraps will come to you. They'll make you feel so good. Because they are carrying the symptoms and they want to assassinate somebody else. They're finding who can do it. And sometimes they'll come to you. 
Because they feel through you they can get their mission accomplished. Be very, very careful. In officers, in churches, it happens sadly. So Pastor Peter is just so pumped up. He's excited. And he says, wonderful, what do you want us to do? Pastor Peter, let's do this. And they begin to say, let's sign this document. Hey, let's sign this, let's sign this, and etc. A few days later, they come to see Pastor Peter and say, Pastor Peter, look at Ivan. Look at Billy. Look at Shani. I got the name right. Shani. Look at Shani. Look at Reza. It seems that what we spoke, they don't have that. No. Now, can we do something about You know, Pastor Peter, now after all, you signed the document. No. If you hadn't signed it, you could have done something. You also said yes, no, Pastor, no. You know why? He listened to the words without discerning the spirit. Please. People who have these symptoms will do things what they usually do not do. They will go extra miles to try and accomplish what they want to. If that is not good enough for you, the fourth thing could be is when you have these symptoms, you're going to get very bitter, angry, agitated. When you see certain people, if that's happening to you, once again, it could be because you are carrying the symptoms. You are carrying these symptoms. You're carrying these symptoms. This is what I want to tell you. If you carry these symptoms, and if you don't recognize and deal with it very quickly, will affect you, will affect the people all around you. It's about two years ago, I think, or two and a half years ago. <laughs> Come in, finding you now. Praise God. <laughs> I love this moment. It's the best moment of the sermon. Now, okay. Uh, I was in Australia. I went to preach in Australia. Full fired, prayed up, and you know, great time. And I'll, uh, they have just launched the direct flight to Melbourne. So I was so happy. Direct flight to Melbourne, amazing, you know, so good. I get to Melbourne, spend the first night, I think the second day when I wake up, I found a few boils on my body. And I thought it could be because of the weather. So what I did was I quickly just begin to, just begin to break those blisters. And did, I just ignored it. The third day, it seemed that the blisters had increased. And not too bothered, but a bit concerned. I told my auntie, I said, auntie, I just have a look. She knows a little bit about the medical stuff and she said, let's go to the doctors. I said, okay. So she takes me to the uh, doctors and you know, uh, the doctor comes, the lady doctor come, come Mr. De Silva, you go and she was a problem and you know, right? And etc. okay. And she smiles at me and says, Mr. De Silva, I want you to know, you got chicken pox. I said, what? You have got chicken pox. I was really upset. But what made me upset even more was the words that came after that. They said, Mr. De Silva, please make sure that you stay in a room and don't come out of the room. Because when you walk with these symptoms, you can cause problems to the people around you. That really hurt me. Because you have the symptoms now, Mr. De Silva. Please stay in a room. Don't go about. Because it can spread. I said, why are you telling us the story? Because I'm trying to tell you, do yourself a favor this week. Don't go out. Please don't go out. 
because you are spreading something that you're not supposed to spread. The pastor, what do we do? Now, forget, don't, for, forgive me for saying this in, uh, in the Sinhala and the Tamil culture. You know, when a child, a girl, we say attend age, it's nothing to do with Christianity. We don't follow this at all. But in the Sinhalese, Tamil culture, when a girl attends age, they say, they put the girl in a room and they try to keep her for seven days. And usually the term they use is, Ape lamaya, mona lamaya kvelada. Here is my recommendation for Bethany. Now, when you recognize you have these symptoms from today, go lock yourself up in the room for seven days. And when people ask, call you and ask where you are, you tell them, Ape Pastor Kiva, Mata Kambareke Inda, Mukadamang Vaisen, Vadivunata, Podila Mek Vage, Davas Hatakin, Mama Lokula Mek Vela, Eliate Namakela. Okay? Tell your people that because God wants some local lamias. Amen. So I pray in the seven days in the room that there'll be a conversion, a turnaround from the podilamia to real local lamia. Because when you walk with these symptoms, there's a problem. Now, Brother Glenn, do you know what we're talking about? What are we talking about? What is the poison? What are, what's the symptoms? What's the symptoms? What's the symptoms? Sonet, what's the symptoms? I feel like locking myself. <laughs> he feels like locking himself. <laughs> Sister, what's the symptoms we are talking about? What are we actually talking about? Because I know you don't have it, but I know you will recognize that your neighbor has it. I know, for sure. You say, you know, Pastor, ah, ah, you know, man, I'm a born again after all. I talk in tongues and I give my tithes and I, you know, uh, I give that hundred rupees also now, okay? I, I really don't have that, Pastor, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, what are we talking about? The speaker is talking about the evil spirit, he says. Shani, what are we talking about? Sin, we're talking about sin. You see, you people are too spiritual, that's the problem. <laughs> Sorry? Insecurity? What are we talking about, Vasana? Arrogance? What are we talking about? Very good. We're talking about jealousy. That very thing you don't have and everybody around you has, that's what we are talking about about now I know if I'm to ask you how many of you have it nobody but let me ask you this how many of you seen people who have it let me see please come on give me a wave of hands oh my goodness nobody <laughs> look at that <laughs> friends jealousy You know, the fall of Lucifer was also a problem with jealousy. When the Lord was getting all the glory and the praise and the honor, somebody felt jealous, could not handle it. Oh, how the mighty have fallen because they have jealousy. Oh, how the weak never become strong because they struggle with jealousy. Oh, how the poor stay in poverty because they struggle with jealousy. Do you have it? No, I don't have it, Pastor. Everybody else has it. But you know, if it's not dealt with, it will destroy you. Now listen to what I'm saying. You cannot stop people becoming jealous of you. You can never stop that. Don't you even try to pray about it. Forget about it. It doesn't work. People will always be jealous of you, about you, and who you are. I want you to face the fact, please. Face it. That's the truth. 
sometimes the very person who sits with you and has a meal with you shares a coffee with you shares a meeting with you might be jealous of you please face facts but here is you have no control over that see daniel could have lushanti at that moment got very upset and said oh, everybody is jealous of me and she could have said i want to give up and she could have jumped in to the lions den i'll tell you what if if daniel had jumped in the lions den because he could not handle others becoming jealous of him i'll tell you what he would have been a great meal for the lions there are some of you you have become a great meal because you do not know how to handle people who are jealous about you you are tormented because others are jealous about you please let go you can't do anything about it pastor he is jealous she is jealous praise god that people are jealous of you you have something that they don't have you have something that they want that is why so you be happy amen if somebody is not jealous about you please get depressed why are you laughing i'm telling the truth if nobody is jealous about you please you must get depressed because nothing in your life is making others feel something people were jealous about jesus aha people were jealous about the apostles aha i'll tell you what it's a good sign when people are jealous about you something is working for you amen so don't get upset give praise give thanks give glory Hey pastor praise God 50 people are jealous of me hallelujah 100 are jealous about me as well hallelujah praise God is working God's hand is upon you that is why they are jealous about you if nothing is happening nobody is jealous about you but here is the next thing You never be jealous about anybody. Never ever become jealous about anybody. That's within your control. I'm giving you a maths lesson there if you see how to experience freedom from jealousy acknowledge ask forgiveness equals freedom it is like 1 plus 1 is how much 1 ah oh, she says 1 plus 1 is 1 a uh, two two okay right so okay two okay that's maths how do you experience freedom acknowledge and ask forgiveness the mathematic term is you will come to a place called freedom freedom from this deadly symptoms from this deadly symptoms may you never carry jealousy may you never carry jealousy may you never carry jealousy like i said i know you know who you are maybe you are carrying it maybe you are so weak that you cannot acknowledge it sometimes husbands are jealous of their wife sometimes the wife is jealous of the husband sometimes sadly 
parents are jealous of their children. When you hear it, it, finds, it seems to be crazy. Sometimes siblings are jealous. Your workmates are sometimes jealous about you. Oh, but I pray that you will never, ever be jealous. You will never be jealous because in these symptoms, it's poisonous, it is vicious, it's detrimental, it destroys, it does such a lot of harm. And I'm, in a few minutes time, I'm going to take part of Holy Communion. I want to tell you something. I don't remember many sermons that I preached, but I remember a few. The first sermon I preached at our Bethany Church in Batramulla was the second Sunday. First Sunday, Pastor Camillus preached. The second Sunday, I preached. And I preached on a message about vision. I'll never forget that. Proverbs 29, 18. The third Sunday, I preached a message on regrets may come too late in life based on the life of Samson. Regrets may come too late in life. See, when you carry these symptoms and you don't deal with it, you can live. And someday when you are really tired, weak, maybe old, broke, everything is falling apart, maybe that day you might say, you know what? I want to repent about jealousy. And God will forgive you. But maybe at that time in life, you have lost too much. You have lost too much. Yes, you have received forgiveness. But the damage could be far too much. Regrets may come too late. I pray that it will not happen to any one of you in this room. Concerning this subject matter. Pastor, what do I do? I told you the maths. Acknowledge and ask forgiveness. Acknowledge and ask forgiveness. There's no greater way to come into this place of freedom. The greatest way to do it is by acknowledging what Jesus did on the cross for us. Holy Communion is all about freedom. Holy Communion helps me to remember what Christ did for me. And as I acknowledge it, I find freedom. Even as the team comes and prepares the communion table, here is what I want you to do tonight. Number one question is, have you made peace with God? Is Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? That's the first one. The second one is, go deep into the subject that I've been sharing with you. Jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. Do you have jealousy in you? Like I said, if I'm to ask you, you will say no. But please, take note that regrets might come too late in life. It might come too late in life. So what do you do? Acknowledge, ask forgiveness. When we take part of the Holy Communion, I pray that you will experience the freedom that is offered to us through the cross, through the crucifixion, that you will experience this great, great freedom. I want you to close your eyes together with me. Thank you, Lord. And as your eyes are closed tonight,
first question is have you made peace with the lord have you acknowledged jesus as the lord and the savior of your life if not do it right now all that you need to say is lord jesus forgive me for my sin jesus i acknowledge you as my lord and my savior wash me with your precious blood and accept me as your child if you said that prayer sincerely the bible says that you become a born again and you become a child of god those of you who have a relationship with god maybe you recognize the symptoms and maybe you're saying i need to deal with it have faith tonight when you come and take part of the communion through the shed blood on the cross you will experience supernatural freedom that bondage that symptoms will be broken it will be broken it will be broken it will be broken father i thank you for your people i thank you even as they begin to take part of the holy communion acknowledge in what you did for them may they experience every blessing that is promised in holy communion bless the team that begins to serve it in jesus name amen and amen please come and take part of holy communion after you do that just be in the atmosphere of worship after that i would love to pray with any one of you who needs prayer thank you jesus my jesus our god i've been set free my god my savior has ransomed
Would you stand up together with me, church? Let's begin to sing. The Lord has promised good to me again. Lift up your hands tonight. No matter what you are going through, this is the promise of the Lord. He's promised to be good to us. In a few minutes' time, we want to pray with any one of you tonight. But we're going to sing this again. The Lord has promised good to me. The Lord has promised good Amen. To you confess it, yes. His word. if you are saying Pastor Day I would like somebody to pray with me for me would love to do that for you tonight as you begin to worship a little bit I also just want to encourage you next Sunday is a very special Sunday next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday can you turn to your neighbor and say Pentecost Sunday it's an amazing Sunday a wonderful service wonderful service. Pentecost Sunday is one of the greatest historical days in the Christian calendar. It's the fulfillment of a prophecy. It is the empowerment of the disciples. It was a day where it seems that the weak became strong. And so next Sunday you come like you do. Bring your friends along and come because I'm confident we could experience Pentecost and we have very special service lined up for you so make sure that you don't miss next Sunday okay so we're going to worship if you need prayer prayer team I'm going to come and just stand together with me anybody needs prayer quickly you come when as the people come please start praying with them and for them okay come sister Rosemary please come you know and very quickly, those who need prayer, Sister Dilani, please come and begin to pray with us. Amen. Anybody who needs prayer, quickly, let's start praying for them. Come worship them. Lead us in the song.
Amen. God bless you. We're going to see you next Sunday. We're going to do the final worship song. If you want to leave, you can leave, but you can stay and enjoy the presence, okay? Amen. One more praise song. Thank you, team. King of man.